Even if you're not really into art, you've probably used a marker before, and it most likely looks something like this. It's like your default marker. It has a fine tip, but most importantly, its ink is water-based. Which is okay, but these markers are a bit special. Their ink is actually based on alcohol, which makes them a lot cooler. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to work with them. Now, most alcohol markers, though it really depends on the brand, will have two main tips. One of them being the chisel tip, the one that looks like highlighter and the second one being the brush tip. And the brush tip is really the most amazing thing about alcohol markers, because it just allows you to transition from a thick line to a really thin and detailed one. And it also makes blending really easy, because it allows you to cover a really big space in a small amount of time. And it's also like super satisfying to work with. So, in order to really show you how these markers work differently, I've prepared two circles and I'm going to fill in the left one with the water-based marker and the right one is going to be the alcohol marker. alcohol markers is that the alcohol is much more blendable in water so you can really achieve that smooth look which you can see on the right while the water markers on the left will leave behind those dots and lines every time you make a new stroke so you can really compare those two and see that the circle A is much more smooth and just really looks satisfying. Now you've probably seen that the alcohol marker functions really well when it's just one color. But their biggest benefit is that they can really allow you to blend and do pretty transitions. So what I'm going to do next is I'll take these two blue water markers and these two blue alcohol markers and I will try to create the best transition I possibly can with each of those pairs to make this kind of blue to a darker blue gradient. Never mind that marker just died, so we'll probably switch to green. When it comes to blending alcohol markers, I usually put down the lighter tones first and then shape out and sketch out the darker parts. And then I go back to the lighter tones and make sure that the transition between the light and the dark isn't sudden and is really natural. Another important thing about alcohol markers, you will need the right paper. Your printing paper probably will not work because it will just dissolve. Because the ink is so intense and it basically gets everywhere, it's really important that it doesn't leak through because as soon as it gets somewhere, it's really hard to remove. So what they do is they make special paper which is coated with chemical stuff on one side that prevents leakage. But you really need to make sure that you know which part is the coated one and which one is not. Because if you draw on the coated one, it just makes a mess and it looks terrible. So you can see that I have this red check mark in the corner just so I know which page I'm on. This paper is surprisingly really thin, but it's able to withhold the ink simply because there is this chemical coating on the other side. Well, I ended up going with purple because my green marker died too. But on the left side you can see the water marker and it's like a richer purple. But you can see all the strokes and the points where I took my hand off the paper. Everything is really visible, which is not the best for making a gradient. Also, my paper started dissolving halfway through, which is not a best sign because this paper is especially made for markers. It's mostly because these markers only have the bullet nib, which is really stiff and it's great if you want to use it as a fine liner, but it's not the best thing for blending. 
On the other side, you have the alcohol marker, which is like a grayish purple, but you can really see the transition is smooth. Now that you've seen what these markers can do, I suggest we go and create a full-on piece with them. Also, a nice detail that specifically this brand has is that they actually put letters of the colors, so you have blue, blue-violet, green, red, and so on, which just makes it really organized. Surprise, surprise, we are drawing The Simpsons. And I'm also doing voiceover, which is kind of weird. <laughs> The video of me actually drawing this thing is like X hours long, so I'll just speed it up and put some music over it. But what is really going on now is that I did not include the sketching process in the video because there's like nothing interesting happening. It's just me trying to get the shapes right, then erasing it and getting angry because it did not work and then redoing it all over again. And now past me is just going over the sketch with a fine liner. And also a warning from voiceover me, uh, don't use water-based fine liners when you're going to use alcohol markers because it mixes together and not in a pretty way, it makes a mess. So yeah, basically just use alcohol fine liners if you're using alcohol markers. Great thing about drawing The Simpsons is that they don't really use different line thickness at all. Their characters are just like drawn in the same lines, which fits the style and it's really comfortable for the animators because they don't have to use different line thickness. And neither do I and that really makes my job easier. So now that the outline is done, we are ready to color it in. And what I'll do is I'll take a scrap piece of paper and try out a few different shades just to see which really match the reference photo. And after that I'll pick a color to use for the shadows. And because Simpsons are animated, the shadow is really just a different color. It's not like in realism where you would have a smooth transition between the light and the dark. So this makes the job a lot easier. I chose grey to use for the shadows because it just worked the best and after applying it I went over it with the yellow once again just to make it really fit the color theme. This is the part where the fine liner thing really backfired because it was water based, it really started to smudge in some places, so at least I'd recommend wait for the line work to really dry before you start coloring it in. The Simpsons have a wide color palette. I've probably used every single marker I own for this drawing. And it really shows how saturated and rich the colors are. That's not to say that they can't be used for realism, there are plenty of people out there who do that. And they usually combine the markers with colored pencils. I sometimes do that when I need to add really small details like highlights or blicks. When I'm done with the piece, I will also go over every line with the fine liner once again, just to make sure that everything really stands out. The markers I am using are called Copics, but these are not the only alcohol markers out there. The quality of the marker really depends on the brand. I mostly look for the brands that make markers with brush tips, which some don't, but some do, and I also find it really nice when the brand offers refills because the ink runs out pretty quickly if you use them often so it's really nice to be able to refill the marker without having to buy a completely new one. Some brands also offer replacements for the tips if they break. There are many many colors you can buy but if you're not satisfied you can actually get just the ink, combine it Put it into an empty marker and make your own color.
And now, after some final touches, we have the finished piece. Alcohol markers are one of my favorite mediums to work with because they are really bright but at the same time can give you a realistic looking result. It is also a very fast medium compared to for example colored pencils and apart from the paper you don't really need much to use them. So I hope you found this video useful and maybe it even inspired you in some way so you can go out and create something yourself.